coming out tonight to observe my practice. My name is Geraldine Entendido. The more I live, the less I know. <laughs> yes, I have reached a point where I know almost nearly next to nothing. <laughs> I've worked very hard to reach this stage of my development. I teach whatever 101 and whatever 103 to a group of students. <laughs> I've been instructing for many years, and as you can see, I've turned into one of those proverbial desk dwellers. <laughs> right now, the students and I are focusing on the summer reading assignment, the novel Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Also, the students are supposed to come up with a thesis about the main characters, Mr. Fitzwilliam Darcy and Miss Elizabeth Bennet, by the end of class today. Also, earlier this week, I assigned a composition called What I Did on My Summer Vacation. They can come up with their own titles, of course, but that's the assignment. I like to give my students models to emulate. Sometimes the model pre-exists, sometimes I create the model. I like to model for my students the skills I want them to learn. For the summer uh, vacation assignment, for example, I narrated my own experience so they would know what it was I was looking for. <laughs> yes. And I had the most incredible experience this summer. The administration sent me on an educational tour to the Middle East. They want me to help them update the curriculum, <laughs> make it more multi culty relevant to the students' lives. <coughs> Given the current state of the world, the Middle East seems the place to be for this kind of curriculum work. <laughs> sure which desert. There are a lot of deserts out there. Pretty soon they all start to look alike. To me they do. Anyone else will tell you the same thing. Yeah, the local Muslim community there occupied these dilapidated yet still habitable concrete apartment blocks. I lived in one of these blocks too. At first, I think I frightened the community. But after they saw that I keep myself generally well covered, because I'm so fair, they accepted <laughs> me pretty much. I gained a kind of special status, like a maverick, or like a doctor of some sort, really. They, uh, they tolerated me, the point is. Um, let me use the community swimming pool. Really, I had no problems with the neighbors. I don't like to swim in chlorinated water, but I liked hanging out at the community swimming pool. No one else was ever there. I'd loll around, dangle my hands and feet in the water, soak in the solitude, Read my book. <laughs> Periodically, I could feel the neighbors watching me through their tenement windows. I think they fancied me exotic, which is so funny because I'm so not exotic. <laughs> I mean, Middle Easterners are the epitome of exotic. <laughs> to me, they are. So it's kind of funny. One day I was lolling at the pool, as usual. I remember I was reading the definition of the word tapeworm, <laughs> when I looked up and spotted two dangerous-looking strangers headed for me. At first, I figured them for Bedouins, you know, just passing through, but then I, noted, I, I noticed they were walking straight for me. Well, I rolled over, jumped up, and tried to get away. But they trapped me. These guys looked treacherous, 
like terrorists, which it turns out they were. <laughs> One of them hands me this object. Here, says the first terrorist, this is a dirty bomb. It is your responsibility to disengage it, otherwise your community will suffer a terrible fate. But this is not really my community, I said, hoping these guys would realize their mistake. <coughs> it does not matter, says the second terrorist. It is still your responsibility. Then oh, they run away. When I look at the bomb, I have to laugh. <laughs> but I can't laugh long, because hidden in its belly is a clock, and I realize that this Buddha is therefore a bomb, and that while the situation makes no sense to me whatsoever, <laughs> I can waste no time. Um, I have to act fast, otherwise my community will suffer a terrible fate. I run to the crest of a nearby hill, hoping I can throw the bomb far enough so that the poisons avoid my community. But there is another community on the other side of the hill. <laughs> so I can't throw it there. I run to the crest of another hill with a similar hope. There is another different community <coughs> on the other side of that hill. I run to the crests of the hills surrounding my community, all the hills, but there are people everywhere. Finally, out of desperation, I sprint back to the community swimming pool and throw the bomb into the chlorinated water. It explodes like a geyser cascading millions of irradiated raindrops all over my community and me. At that moment, I have no idea if I have just helped my community or if I have just made everything a million times worse. Well, the administration yanked me back to my desk so fast I could not even say salam alaikum to my community. <laughs> I feel fine. The administration has ordered some tests on me to see how the whole shebang affected me. But uh, I have to wait for my new insurance card to arrive before I can take the test. <laughs> design rubrics, establish objectives, set standards, plan lessons, prepare generally. These are reading tests on Pride and Prejudice to see if my students actually read the book.
these are those reading tests on Pride and Prejudice. I keep putting off grading them, but I have to grade them now because, well, I've got boatloads of summer vacation assignments coming in tomorrow, and Pride and Prejudice papers are due in a couple weeks. Right now, I'm eyeballing them. <laughs> Getting a feel for them. Organizing them generally before I begin the actual grading process. <laughs> grading is the worst part of the job. It's so subjective. <laughs> objectives, <coughs> design rubrics, set standards, but, well, when it comes to the actual moment of assessment, a lot of how it unfolds is based on perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, everyone's different, right? What moves everyone's heart is a little bit different. And well, you know how a butterfly's wings flapping in China can create a maelstrom in another area? without ever intending to? That's what grading feels like to me. <laughs> or, or like the way a tapeworm can go unnoticed until it's too late to do anything about it. Yes, really, that can happen. I've done the research. Oh, I mean, I toil creating objectives, setting high standards, teaching them about positive feedback, and then I have to find the time and the energy to assess how much or well they have toiled to meet my objectives, my standards, my therefores. Oh, I do fully understand the need for objectives and goals, rules and regulations, norming processes, general good health. <laughs> They got books where you can read all about assessment, like authentic assessment, criteria-based assessment, norm-based assessment, informal assessment, peer assessment, performance assessment, standardized assessment, written assessment, verbal assessment. <laughs> Oral assessment. <laughs> yes. But they don't teach you right. <laughs> they don't teach you right, those books. All the experience I ever got about how to be fair, I got by sheer experience. Yeah. For example, it is very important for the rubric to be clear and precise so that the students know in which direction they're supposed to go. There are a lot of seminars you can take on this subject, but I say, teach what you love and the learning will take care of itself. <laughs> like that whole money thing. <laughs> <laughs> William, please, please don't start this with me again. No, 
I know. You have to meet her. It's your density. <laughs> it was just a joke. No. No, look, I'm not upset. I know. You know, it's not like I expect you not to meet her. It's just that, well, every time this happens, it takes a little something I don't know out of my heart, and I just don't know how much longer I can go on doing this with you. Yes, yes, I know that Pride and Prejudice only lasts for 254 pages, but there's no guarantee that you'll call when it's over, Fitz. <laughs> I never know if I'm going to hear from you or not after you and Elizabeth, you know, end the book or not. Yeah, I do like her. Yeah, I wish I were she. Sometimes. Not all the time. Yeah. Yeah, Jane Austen and I are total buds. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Fitz, can you not understand that I want to be with someone who wants to be only with me? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like Levin from Anna Karenina? <laughs> oh, yeah, kitty. Okay, um, maybe Jason from The Sound and the Fury. Yeah, I know he's an asshole, but at least he doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> I know, I know. You always tell me this. You're the best master. All your servants say so. Yeah, excellent recommendations. No, I'm serious, really. Look, Darcy, I don't think we need to uh, continue what we're doing here, um, whatever it is. Um, so don't call me, OK? Wait for me to call you the next time, OK?
Take out your notebooks. Let's begin by hearing some rough drafts of the summer vacation composition, which um, those are due tomorrow. What? What? Composition? Composition. Truman, the one I assigned at the beginning of last week. The one, you know, the one about what you did on your summer vacation? That one. I didn't know we had homework. Oh, Truman, are you writing down your assignments like you're supposed to? I can't write. <laughs> you can write. I'm a bad writer. <laughs> well, Truman, you know, the only way to get better as a writer is to write. Um, Miss Entendido, I'll read my rough draft. Thank you, Leticia. <laughs> okay, I want you to wait until you have everyone's attention, okay? All right, just shh. Okay. On my summer vacation, I went on a cruise with my mom and dad to Nova Scotia, which is really cold even in the summertime. And so on the way back home, the cruise ship broke down in the mid-Atlantic, and we had to be rescued by a merchant vessel which was nearby. As we were passing from our broken ship to the merchant ship, I accidentally fell off the boat and into the middle of a mid-Atlantic. Leticia, please continue. Okay, um, somehow in the ocean, I lost the necessity to breathe. And I sank to the bottom of the sea and I landed next to this small underwater vent with metal models of fish lying next to it. And one group was a school of black tip sharks. And another was a school of hammerhead sharks. And the remaining group was a school of small bait fish. I sat there wondering why the heck are these metal fish at the bottom of the ocean? And suddenly, the underwater vent expelled a massive amount of bubbles, and all the metal fish came to life. Oh, yeah. No, shh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leticia, <coughs> please continue. Okay, um, the school of bait fish swirled around me while the two groups of sharks circled above me. The bait fish were an electric blue with silver dorsal fins. The black tip sharks span 10 feet long and the hammerheads 12 feet long. The sharks attacked the bait fish and ate all of them in a few seconds. Then they all swam away, only to come back again all at once, ready to rip me limb by limb. I swam as hard as I could back to the surface of the ocean. When I reached the surface, I could hear my dad yelling for me. <laughs> Leticia, wow, that is some experience. Um, that didn't happen. Yes, it did. That was a really, really amazing experience, Leticia. Um, I love the part about the underwater vent. It doesn't make sense. Well, it happened, Truman. Shut up. It makes some sense. You're lying. Truman, please go wait for me in the hall. What? I didn't do it. Truman, anything. just go. What? Leticia, come over here. Let me look at that composition for a minute.
really nauseous. Plus, my eyes hurt. Like this morning, I was looking at the oatmeal from the corners of my eyes. And my mom saw me doing it and told me to stop because my eyes could stay that way. But I was trying to see my oatmeal as if I were Charles Dickens. <laughs> they confirmed and registered genius. I mean, mom, I want my eyes to stay this way. Anyway, so I was looking at my oatmeal in the corners of my eyes, and guess what? The oatmeal transformed into porridge, which was totally cool. Miss Intendino also says that God is in the details. Well, oatmeal and porridge are totally different details. Therefore, God cannot be a monothesis. God must be a polythesis. Ah, I have discovered that oatmeal is not only oatmeal. It is also porridge, corrupted pottage, mush, pentagrass, a food made by boiling some leguminous or farinaceous substance in water, or like milk. And I could not have seen all this truth had I not been looking at my cereal bowl through the corners of my eyes. Thanks to Miss Intendito, my genius grows fatter and more out of control by the day. <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. Where is he? Here I am, Miss Intendito. Truman, are you aware that you have a summer vacation assignment due tomorrow? Uh, and if you don't turn it in, you're going to fail. Also, Truman, you have a thesis due about Pride and Prejudice by the end of class today. Are you aware of this? Yes. Well, do you have one? My parents are out of town right now. <laughs> your parents don't do your homework for you. Yeah, but they proofread it for me to make sure it's right. How much do they proofread it? Just so it sounds right. Truman, when are they back in town? I don't know. <laughs> Who's taking care of you while you're gone? I'm taking Adderall. That's <laughs> 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 Only better. Designer. Okay, you're taking Adderall. Who's taking care of you? Oh, the TV. The TV is watching me. <laughs> Truman, you need to focus on school. Truman. I am focused. Adderall is a focused drug. <laughs> Truman, you need to focus on your education. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, Truman? Truman. Yes. All right, well, say it back to me so I know you heard me correctly. I need to focus on my education. That's right, Truman. Truman, I want a thesis by the end of class today. Do you understand? Okay. Okay, good. Are you going to have it? I have it already. <laughs> you do? Why did you say so? It's not good. It's just a draft. I want you to use it in the peer workshop today. But I don't want anyone to read it. Truman, if you want to improve as a writer, you have to let other people read what it is you write. Otherwise, you're only writing for yourself, and well, you might as well go to therapy. <laughs> I like writing for myself. It's other people reading it that I don't like. Truman, it's very important that you learn how to communicate clearly with others. Yes, you have to know how to communicate clearly with others, because if you don't know how to communicate clearly with others, then you won't be able to make lots and lots of money. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up, Truman? Have you given it? I want to be a movie director. Oh, well, see, movie directors need to be able to communicate clearly many complex and subtle things to their collaborators. You know, the actors, the actresses, the uh, cinematographers, the designers, the clicker people, the... Um, <laughs> Caterers, the... I'm talking movies, Miss Intendido. Motion pictures. All I'm 
saying, Truman, is that it is very important to know how to communicate clearly with others. It's the only way you're going to be able to make bank loads of money, all right? Now, get back in the classroom and tell Leticia to swap theses with you. Go! I want everyone to exchange theses with a partner. What's a theses? <laughs> theses, it's like the word crises. Like the plural for crisis. Theses is to thesis as crises is to crisis. <laughs> it's like theses. <laughs> What's the singular for feces? <laughs> <laughs> Students. Now, remember that people learn better from praise than they do from criticism. <clears throat> in the novel Pride and Prejudice, written in 1813 by Jane Austen, an English lady, the main character, Fitzwilliam Darcy, otherwise known as Mr. Darcy, undergoes a massive change. <laughs> this change takes place throughout all three volumes of the novel. <laughs> As a result, the reader can sense Darcy's catastrophic change through his use of diction, sentences, and punctuation. <laughs> that is the best thesis I have ever heard. <laughs> Leticia! <laughs> Leticia, why are you here? I do not know. What did you do? Fine, thanks. Leticia? You are suffering. You've you've fallen precariously low. It it could be, Leticia, that you are failing. Oh well, I make it a practice to not know as much as possible. I work better that way. It's less restraint to my physical liberty. Leticia, what sort of medication are you taking these days? Um Tractorol? <laughs> I am not aware of that one. Oh, um, well, you know, I mean, it's a focus drug. It represses people's ability to focus on anything besides work. Well, it doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, well, I have a rare constitution. Leticia, I was informed that you used foul language. That's why you are here. Foul language? You said shitty. I didn't say shitty. I said feces. Yes, but you meant shitty. <laughs> I know. And I'm more like crises. What does feces have to do with crises? They both sound like feces. Leticia. <laughs> I cannot waste time with you arguing about semantics. The point is, you put a fellow classmate's work down, and that is mean. I didn't put it down. I praised it. When I said feces, I meant feces, only the singular. Said. What? Don't say I go, Leticia. Say I said. Use proper English, Leticia. For God's sake, this is a school. <laughs> Leticia, are you planning on failing? Hmm. Well, define success. Watch it, Leticia. Consider this a warning.
Wars pretend the world's amused, a chaos that is high and mighty works. The shining cars pretend the world's amused, the chaos that is high and mighty works. The school of people in hails the blood, the passion inside of us goes. The school of people in hails the blood, the passion inside of us goes. So what? So what? Give up, give up. Corrupt, corrupt. Give up, give up. Haven't you heard you meant to be? More than a measure. Mighty grating gods. <laughs> Please be with me as I assess the children's tests. <laughs> Standardized tests are achievement tests, otherwise known as norm-based assessments. They measure how much knowledge a person has accumulated compared to other people, i.e. the norm. Normally, these types of tests don't measure what a person can do with that knowledge. That type of knowledge, know-how, or savoir-faire as the French like to call it, is measured with performance tests, otherwise known as criteria-based assessments. The test I am
am grading now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good. Sanding the skin 
makes the um, monitors stick better, and that means better test results. <laughs> okay, good. Now, take these and put them on. <laughs> yes, all the way around your heart. You want to get them as close to your heart as you can. Yeah, a little closer. watching what my heart did on the monitor. And I wondered, does everyone's heart do that? What's that big mountain next to that little mountain? What's that sinkhole there? Is that normal? Am I normal? God, please let me be normal. Yeah. Man, I know. Dude. Speak of the tension. I mean, you go into one of these tests, you're semi-normal. You walk out of one of these tests, the technician has all this information that could prove you are, in fact, very <coughs> abnormal, not in a good way. She has all this information, but she can't tell you whether or not you're normal um, until she analyzes all the data. You go, how long till I find out? She goes, seven to 10 business days. You go, no. She goes, don't call us. We'll call you. I don't even know what to think about this situation. <laughs> 
Misentendido won't go back to the desert, so the desert will come to Misentendido. <laughs> I did a little research on the Buddha after my Middle Eastern debacle. I found out about this type of person they have in, in that religion called a Bodhisattva. Yeah. The job of the Bodhisattva is to forego her own enlightenment for the sake of others. This Bodhisattva person will stay in the world even until the bitter end for the sake of one living moral. <laughs> day after day, the children walk in, they walk out. They say hello, they don't say hello. They bring their books, they don't bring their books. They do their homework, they don't do their homework. They sneeze in their hands, they sneeze on the desk, they go to the nurse, they are never sick. They have perfect temperatures. They get to school. Who knows where they go? They say goodbye, they don't say goodbye. I've had to grow accustomed to it. These, after all, are their according actions. Me, I remain here in my desk until the end, in the dark.